Hi, I'm Gordon Waite. I'm about to do a grinding step in operation on this 20 inch quartz mirror. This is going to be an F4.5 quartz mirror. Uh, that means the radius is about 180 inches, focal length about 90 inches. This has already been uh, ground out to a nice curve with number 80 silicon carbide and I'm moving on to number 120 silicon carbide. So I'm setting this up on my turntable on my grinding machine and we're going to do a method of grinding that I call fixed post grinding. Some people call it spin grinding or spinning. And I'll show you how this gets set up. Um, the first thing is we have to put a little bit of abrasive on the mirror. I've got number 120 silicon carbide, a couple hundred, 250 grams or so. And I'm going to put about uh, two heaping teaspoons on here, maybe a little less than that, scattered over the surface. Teaspoon and a half, we'll call it. And then wet it down good with a squirt of water. At this level, I'm just using plain tap water. When I get into polishing stages, I use still water. Okay, plenty of water on there. Now we have to get the tool on here and get the machine adjusted. Okay, we're using a tile tool. Uh, this is a ceramic tile and dental plaster. And this one's about 15 inches in diameter. Goes face down on the mirror. I rotate it around a little bit just to distribute the abrasive. <clears throat> now with spin grinding or fixed post grinding, I'm going to have a post that comes down through here and drops into the back of the tool. And that'll hold the tool in place. And then as the mirror rotates underneath it, it'll force the tool to rotate on top of it. And the differential in the rotation between the two is what causes the grinding here. Now I need to set this up at a pretty fairly precise location. And to do that, I run it to the back of the, of the mirror so that it's tangent. I can just put my finger back there and feel when I've got it tangent. Then I take a plastic ruler. Uh, when you're working with a mirror, you try not to use anything metallic or anything that might break or scratch the glass. So I use a nice plastic ruler. Measure the distance here, I get 5 inches. As you'd expect, a 15 inch tool on a 20 inch mirror gives you a 5 inch gap. Now what I want to have is for this tool to overhang the back of the mirror by two and a half inches. So I'm just going to push that tool straight back until I get seven and a half inches on here. And then I know I've got a two and a half inch gap on the other side. Now I have to set up my overarm here so that I can drop the pin. And this is the dangerous part. This pin is stainless steel, five eighths inch diameter rod. And it just goes through the machine like so, and it's going to drop down into the hole in the back. I just loosen these two knobs on here. I've got T-track on the top here. And now I just adjust this so that that rod can drop right down into there. Tighten it up a little bit. And now I run the machine for just a second. And that lets the tool come up against the rod where it's actually going to operate. I measure one more time. And I'm just slightly under my two and a half inch. So I loosen these up, nudge it back just slightly, and then lock these down. And now we pull the pin out. Now one trick when you're using a machine, you don't take the pin and have it travel over the mirror. So I move the pin along the top of the machine and off this way so that if I bobble it or something falls off the bottom of the pin, it doesn't fall onto the mirror. So now I've got the machine adjusted, bring the tool back here, and I'm going to put some weight on there. Now with silicon carbide, the more weight you put on it, the faster it'll grind. So there's 25 pounds. That one makes 50. The little one here makes 60 pounds. And, uh, Quartz is harder than Pyrex, which is your normal substrate material, so uh, having 60 pounds on will help a lot. So I slide that back under there, grab my pin, pin through the middle, nudge it around a little bit until it drops in the hole. There we go. 
and now this is ready to grind. Now the grinding operation, as the machine turns around the abrasive will get ground down slowly and the glass gets chipped off and parts of the tool get chipped off. And what I'll do, I'll watch as it goes and listen. When you first put on new abrasive it's a real harsh sound and as the abrasive is chewed down it gets softer and softer. Eventually I'll use a plastic spoon to put a little bit more abrasive on, squirt a little more water on. I'll do that two or three times until uh, too much swore for uh, sludge builds up on the mirror. And then I'll use a sponge and wipe it off while the mirror is op while the turntable is operating, while it's still grinding. And then add more silicon carbide and more water. So this thing will just continuously grind and in this situation I'll grind anywhere from a half an hour to an hour depending on how when I need to measure the surface and see how it's progressing. So I'll start this up and uh, sh let it run for a little while and show you how I add abrasive during the process. Oh, and I run the turntable something between 35 and 40 RPMs. You can see the mirror is forcing the tool to go around and causing it to deepen in the center. Actually, I've got it set up with a two and a half inch overhang. It should be pretty close to a neutral position 